actually in the screen? Yep, right at the bullseye middle. And it's recording. Don't worry. What? You're not smiling. Well, I'm not ready to shoot yet. <laughs> Hey there, Frontier fans. Frontier Geek at you again here. And uh, so we're going to be talking about the uh, rear axle today. Uh, this might not be something that you're aware of, um, but there is a very tiny part on the back end of the truck that can be a lot of trouble. Uh, both the uh, Dana M226 and the C200, which is the, the lighter duty axle, uh, both share the same vent characteristic, and that is to allow air uh, in and out of the axle housing, the pumpkin, whatever you'd like to call it, um, when atmospheric um, pressure changes or the temperature inside, which of course is going to raise and lower pressure inside the axle. Uh, unfortunately, the factory vent uh, only allows air to um, escape. It will not allow anything back in. That's problem number one. Uh, problem number two is that uh, it's pretty much a flimsy piece of metal with a little spring, which is supposed to be a check valve. So here's the problems. Um, that spring sometimes fails uh, or the metal corrodes and it just gets jammed shut completely or it'll get jammed open and water can get drawn into your axle. Uh, or even if it is functioning correctly, uh, when uh, pressure escapes, uh, when say uh, the air is uh, warmer, say, or something, um, and then the temperature uh, rises again or, or changes, um, there can be a slight vacuum created inside the axle itself, which then of course somehow <laughs> Some, something's going to give. Uh, sooner or later, that pressure is going to, to build up or the vacuum is going to build up enough. Um, obviously, nothing's going to happen to the metal itself, but uh, the axle seals are not metal. They're rubber. So sooner or later, they're going to give. And what's most likely going to happen is when that, that vacuum um, pops, so to speak, uh, it's probably going to draw contaminants and possibly water into your rear axle, uh, contaminating your lube and eventually um, contributing to uh, bearing failures uh, and uh, also possibly um, failure of the ring and pinion uh, because of foreign material that gets ground up in between there. So <laughs> now that you've got that really frightening caveat, you may be thinking, well, what exactly do I do about that? Okay, well, there is a pretty cheap solution that a lot of people have done. Uh, actually humorously uh, using a Toyota part. Um, <laughs> there, there is one with a Nissan part number as well. Um, I chose not to use that because the barb uh, part of the fitting, even though the thread was the same, the barb was a smaller diameter and I made it, wanted to make sure that the hose was uh, the biggest was uh, possible. Uh, so I ended up using a, a 3 8 inch uh, fuel injection fuel line uh, the uh, Toyota hose barb uh, that I will be publishing the number for, and a K&N uh, push-in breather filter for uh, older um, pre-emission engines, uh, where that was used as well. They they didn't have a uh, sealed uh, closed PCV system, so they just allowed. Um, uh, vapor, uh, vaporized oil and um, extra pressure to escape into the atmosphere. Now we all know that the EPA jumped all over that and, and said no more and shut that down, but uh, thankfully these filters are still available uh, for other applications or for earlier engines which are not EPA applicable and they're only about $8. And if I remember correctly, I think the Toyota fittings around there as well. So the total cost of the kit that I built, I'm going to say, was probably about 30 bucks because uh, I had to get uh, four hose clamps, um, a barbed union, which was basically barbs on both ends, uh, and the uh, K&N filter. And then I went ahead and got a, a sports bottle uh, from Walmart, which I'm going to say I think was between 6 and $7.00. So I took that sports bottle and I went ahead and just broke the straw portion off. It had a little uh, flexible mechanism that would uh, fold over 90 degrees 
uh, so that you could um, basically close the, the straw and the um, inlet, outlet, whatever you like to say there, on the bottle itself. So I, I just broke that part out completely because I wasn't going to use it anyway and uh, made my hose connection through there uh, and then took a going to say, I think it was a half inch drill, um, may have been a 7 16 uh, and uh, drilled another hole uh, right next to it in the cap so that the hose can pass up uh, through um, inside the bottle where the filter is then located. And uh, of course, the other hole is to allow pressure to move in and out. So at that point, you have your filter inside uh, what would be a sealed bottle, except that it does have that one exit hole at the bottom, uh, which will keep uh, water and foreign material from ending up on the filter or passing through the filter and getting sucked into uh, the actual axle itself. Um, some people were using uh, fuel filters from gasoline powered tractors. I mean, yeah, I get that they do have a little bit of mesh in them and I suppose you know, that's better than nothing, uh, but they're really designed for fuels and not for gases. And some people were reporting that they were seeing condensation, which of course would then run down directly through that vent line back into your axle, which is what you're trying to avoid to begin with. And if your axle never got warm enough to flash off that water, eventually you're gonna start building condensate inside your axle, which is the opposite of what we're attempting to accomplish here. Obviously, we do not want that. So um, it's a pretty simple build, really. If you just look at the photos uh, that I've provided, I think you'll really get the idea. Um, the barb threads into the axle on uh, the right-hand side of the pumpkin, if you're looking at it from the rear of the truck, which is obviously going to be the easiest spot to work from, just unscrew the old one with a wrench. Um, the new one, I would put a couple of wraps of Teflon tape around the threads. And here's a note that is not made out of steel. They're, easy, they're either aluminum or they're brass and they're easy to strip. So you do not have to go crazy gorilla on tightening this thing down. I would put it in finger tight and then probably give it a quarter to a half a turn past that just as long as it feels like it's firmly seated, that's enough. Because once the hose is on there and the hose clamp is tightened, there's no way for that fitting to back itself out. It would have to somehow turn the hose and that is not going to happen. So, like I said, just enough to create a seal and make sure that it stays in place is plenty. Don't go crazy on it. You'll strip it, and then you'll have a really big problem. So, caution, cautionary note there. Uh, when you're done with that, you just take your uh, fuel injection hose and just route it along where the brake line goes so that when the axle moves up and down, uh, you have the ability to be able to um, follow that movement. Uh, without uh, getting kinked or overly stretched. Uh, and then the bottle itself can pretty much go anywhere up around the, the rear uh, area of the truck. Um, I actually put mine between the bed walls. So I went behind the rear tire, up near where the, the uh, taillight is, but not up inside the taillight space itself. Some people have done that. They actually removed the taillight. There is a, uh, a cavity back there. And if you had a smaller filter um, or if, if you didn't do this bottle idea, uh, there is enough room to run that vent all the way up there, um, which would be good from the, um, the idea, the extent that it would be quite high. And if your vehicle ever encounters water that reaches that level, you've got much, much bigger problems than whether you're going to get a little bit of water uh, into your axle vent. You are probably flooding your cab at that point and you may have hydrolocked your engine. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be a really bad day uh, either way. Uh, so as I was saying, I actually went on the other side of the tail lamp housing. If you lay down underneath the truck and look up inside, there's a, just a big hole there. The two sides of the bed metal are really not connected together uh, except at a couple of crossover points so that uh, the inside and the outside don't flex too much. But other than that, there's a giant hole up there. So I just went ahead and took the bottle, pushed it up there uh, as far back as possible and as high as possible, uh, and uh, kind of temporarily taped it in place a little bit to hold it uh, in place, and then just put two drill screws uh, right through the um, inside of the bed uh, directly into the bottle. And it's been that way for um, probably 
a little over three years now, and it's been working fine. So uh, I would strongly recommend if you've never gone underneath your axle, uh, your, your truck to get a look at the axle, that is, uh, to take a look at that vent, um, I would strongly recommend that you should do that. Um, there's no guarantee that this is going to prevent axle seal failure. I mean, some people have said that they did the vent mod and their seals failed anyway. And some people have said that they didn't do a vent mod and they got 300,000 miles out of their truck. So I don't know. That's hard to say. Um, I do know that for sure, as I'd mentioned at the beginning, that the OEM design is a one-way check valve. You are only going to allow pressure to escape, which is a terrible idea. So I think that this thing is under-engineered, and in my opinion, everybody should be removing it, whether you go off-roading uh, or anything, because even just driving in really hard rain, if that vent is not functioning correctly, all that water spray underneath, some of that will end up eventually into your axle. So, you know, you don't have to be forwarding rivers and, uh, you know, making YouTube, <laughs> making YouTube videos, going crazy, uh, going through large bodies of water thinking that, oh, I don't need to do that because I don't do any of those crazy things. Well, you, I would strongly recommend you look at it regardless because it could come back and, and bite you you know where. And that's certainly not something that I want you to be leaving any comments um, either on uh, Club Frontier or on the video channel that I wish I'd seen this and now my axle's wrecked. They're expensive. Uh, a brand new axle complete brakes um, from, from, from uh, brake rotor to brake rotor is just about $2,000. So this is a much cheaper uh, little bit of prevention uh, instead of a pound of cure. So I hope this uh, helps somebody out, uh, maybe opens your eyes a little bit to um, the, really, overall, I think the Frontier is, is very well engineered. I think they've only kind of um, missed hitting home runs here, kind of whiffed the bat there uh, on, on only a few things. But this is definitely one that they whiffed. So get, get underneath there and, and, and get a look. Take a look at the pictures, and uh, you'll, you'll, you'll get the idea. You'll see what's going on. And, and go ahead and take care of that. Carry on. And uh, there's still a big world out there. Until next time, get her out there and get her muddy. See ya.